Hi everyone, welcome to another video on the IPv6 series. And in this video, I'm going to talk about router, router solicitation and router advertisement in IPv6. This is again very fundamental and extremely important concept in IPv6. I'll be breaking down this video into three parts. So first I'll talk about the concept of router solicitation and router advertisement. What, what it is, what it's trying to accomplish. And then Next, I'll walk you to a demo on GNS3. And then we'll do a packet analysis, how these packets look like in reality and what are some important fields that determine how the host receiving these messages, for example, RA message is going to behave. So we'll do a detailed analysis of the RS and RA packets, packet analysis. <clears throat> and uh, in the end, I'm also going to talk about if there is any uh, challenge associated with router advertisement, which we should be aware of, okay? Uh, if there is any potential risk, any threat, yeah. So I'll be covering all these three. Uh, so thing is that if I cover all the three topics in one video, it's going to become extremely uh, long. And that's why I'll cover the concept in this video. And this two, uh, these two parts, I'll be covering in the part two, the second video, okay? So with that, let's get started. Let's see what exactly is router solicitation, router advertisement, what it's trying to solve. Okay, so let me draw a small network. Let's say you have a network here, here you have, which consists of this host, let's call it H1. This host is connected to a switch, okay? And then you have another host, host two. Now this switch is connected to a router, R1. And this router is, let's say, connected to another router, R2. They can use any routers. And in the end, this router is connected to another host, H3. Now, as uh, let's say as soon as these hosts, you know, they boot up. So let's say as soon as host one boots up, as I already talked in my previous videos, this host is going to generate a link local IPv6 address, which would start with, which would be in this particular prefix, fp 80 colon colon 10. This is link local IPv6 address. Now, once the host one, this is the first thing it will do after uh, once it boots up, and then it will check whether this IPv6 address is unique in the network or not by starting the duplicate address detection process about which I have already made a video. You can go and have a look if you want, if you haven't gone through that video. So using this DAT process, duplicate address detection, it will get to know whether this IPv6 address, the link local IPv6 address it has generated that is unique or not. And if it is unique, it acquires that IP, IPv6 address. So it can use that IPv6 address. Okay, so once it finds out that this IPv6 address is unique, this host will use that IPv6 address. Now using this IPv6 address, uh, let me change the color. Using this IPv6 address, link local IPv6 address, this host one can talk with 
any host in its local network, local area network. So if host one wants to talk with host two, no problem. It can talk with host two because that's in its LAN segment. So this is the LAN segment you see here, connected over a switch. But because routers do not forward the packets which are destined to link local IPv6 address, and hence these packets will not go beyond this router. What it means is this host, just with the link local IPv6 address, this host cannot talk with anyone, any host which is sitting outside the network. And hence, host one cannot talk with host three. This is the problem right now. So when host one wants to talk with host three, what it would need? So it would need a couple of things. Let, 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 me, check. let me wipe it out. Okay, so when host one wants to talk with somebody who is not in its own network, it would require first, either a unique local or a global IPv6 address. This is the first thing it requires. And the second it would it would require is a route, let's say a default gate. And okay. So that it can go to that default gateway and go to the host which has not needs local network. So these two things it needs. Okay. So it, as I think uh, you must already be aware, the link local would be this, this is similar to private IPv4 addresses. And this is similar to, if I have to draw an analogy, global IPv6 is equivalent to the public IPv4 addresses. What it means is, if, you're, if this entire thing is your private network, let's say, so having a unique local IPv6 address would suffice to establish communication between host one and host three. But if let's say host three is in internet, not in your private network, then you would require a global IPv6 address, which this global IPv6 address starts would be in 2000 colon colon three prefix and unique local would be in FC. Zero zero colon colon seven. This this prefix. So along with this, you would require a default gate. Okay. So these two things are required at host one. Now let's go to the next screen. Now these two things, you know, we have talked about. There are multiple ways host one can get uh, those information. One is either you can manually configure the IPv6 address, the, their unique local or global IPv6 address. And you can also uh, configure the route to, uh, to go to this host. You can, con you can do this manually. Second is you can use a DHCP uh, server, which can provide you IPv6 address. And with that, of course, you can establish the communication. And the last one is stateless address auto configuration. This is what I'm going to talk in more detail. Here, what happens is you are not configuring the IPv6 address manually on the host, rather the host automatically, okay? Automatically host will generate IPv6 address, unique, local, or global for itself using the prefix which is provided by the router okay so for example in that case host one you know was connected to via a switch sorry it was connected to a router so router will send the prefix information in the router advertisement message and using this prefix information host one can automatically 
uh, generate the IPv6 address for itself. Okay. And also, uh, host one can use this router as the default gateway to talk with hosts which are outside its own uh, local network. Okay. So this is where router advertisement message comes into picture. So it can tell to the host, you know what? You can generate your own IPv6 address using this prefix and you can use me as the default gateway. So we are, I'm going to talk about this option in more detail, okay? Uh, in the next video in which I'm going to give a demonstration of how uh, Slack works, how the RS and RA packet look like, okay? And what are some, some important fields? For example, there might be a situation where you might not want host to generate to automatically generate IPv6 prefixes, okay? How you can control those, what are some important bits? For example, there is A bit, which is uh, autonomous address configuration bit. If it is, if that becomes zero somehow in the RA packet, uh, that would mean that even if host receives this RA message, which has the prefix information, it will still not, it will not generate the IPv6 address using this prefix, okay? Because the A bit would be zero. Similarly, we'll talk about uh, more bits and some of the important fields in the RS and RA, uh, 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 RA to be more specific, the router advertisement message, so that things become extremely clear. Uh, yeah, so before I end up this video, there is, just one more thing which I want to talk about. Of course, I'll be giving more details in the demonstration as well, which is basically the, uh, what would be the source and destination IPs in RS and RA message. So let me draw it out once again. So here you have host, here you have a switch, here you have another host, here you have a router, router, and a host. So when H1 sends the router solicitation message, it basically is trying to find out if there is any router in my network using which it can talk with somebody outside its own network. For that, it sends the router solicitation message to check, hey, if there is, is any router in my network. So if this guy will have source IP as the link local IPv6 address. You remember I mentioned that first it creates the link local, once the PC boots up, it creates the link local IPv6 address and then starts the DAD process, duplicate address detection, finds out that this IPv6 address is unique. So it can use this IPv6 address. So by the time it sends the router solicitation message, it is in a position that it can start to use link local IPv6 address and it uses the link local IPv6 address for router solicitation. The destination IP V6 in this case would be this multicast address FF02 colon colon 2. This is the IPv6 address. This is the multicast address to which all the routers will be subscribing. So host will not be subscribing to, the, to this. What it means is this RS message would be sent to, uh, uh, you know, it would be it, it would be a multicast message, but because only the routers are subscribing to this multicast uh, address, only the routers will respond back with message, what we call as the router advertisement message. And in this router advertisement message, the source IP would be link local IPv6 address of the router and the destination IP would be FF02 colon colon one. This is the all node multicast address. I'll talk once uh, when I'm giving the demonstration why it makes sense for this address to be all node, why not unicast uh, to, to host one, okay? 
so I'll be I'll be talking more about this when I start my demonstration in the next video. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it in this video. Thank you so much for watching it.